It's a VSC quilt. VSC. VSC. Look at all the stickies I found. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Look. Ta -da! Welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow. The VSC edition. Yes, because look, I cleaned off the table and I found all these stickies I've made <laughs> for the VSC. And I'm going to keep adding to them because there's still more out there because I remember drawing some with little pictures on them and I don't see little pictures here. Anyway. Look what else we found. We? <laughs> I mean, granted, I'm the one who lost them all, but we? <laughs> Okay, let me clarify. Yeah. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner, <coughs> who's got a cough and die now. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in, was kind of foggy on the way in, but I'm sure we'll burn off and be rainy this afternoon, Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz, I'm the minion there. And we had a slow day yesterday, except for some random spurts at the very end of the day. And so we decided to come in and organize and clean because either, either the shop gets cleaner or that compels people to show up because we're busy doing something else. Because that's why things don't get done here. Let's be honest, is because we're just busy enough or people come when we're trying to actually organize and clean, you know. So um, both happened yesterday. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm coughing because I haven't had enough coffee. It, um, it's hard to organize curry on, or not curry on, but Noro. Any Noro. By, by colorway, because you have a huge sea of, of yarn out in front of you. And then somebody shows up. Generally, when you have the whole sea organized by color and they want to look in the worst to wait section. And, and they can't get there. Yeah. So, so yes, well, I, well, I am, am throwing at Liz, I organized the table and I did all this cleaning. She was organizing a whole lot of yarn that I didn't want to touch with a 10 foot pole. So it's a symbiotic relationship really, you know, but I'm still going to take credit for finding all the post-it notes. <laughs> she did. She found all the lost <laughs> post-it notes that she lost. Cause oh, look, there's wait, 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 I'll pull, oh, no, I'll, wait. I'll pull a pack out and set it on the counter or on the table. And then you know, a day or two later, we're needing more post-it notes because they've disappeared. Yeah, maybe I had something to do with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we found a million Sharpies because every time I have to go make a new VSC post-it, I grab a new stack of post-its and I grab a new Sharpie and they were all buried under the yarn on the table. And I'm realizing as we're talking about the sea of Silk Garden and, um, and the Sharpies, one of which has already fallen to be consumed by the table again. Um, you made a nice little wall of the yarn we're going to talk about today, and the camera is not picking it up at all. But you know, it's all good. Oh, that's the one right there. <laughs> Never mind. It's okay. There, there's yarn right below the camera. I could tilt the camera down, but then we might start looking even squatter than we are. So that gets weird. Um, we are actually going to do a normal VSC today, if you can call anything we do normal. <laughs> and um and switch up yarns and we really weren't sure what to do um but we we found something so that actually i think is quite lovely and oh look i have a sample right here because this has a sample of a million things on it um so and and i realized i'm gonna start with the notion that's fine because i realized when i went over and looked at the notion wall one thing we have a butt ton of that i would love to share the wealth with other people is are these little guys and you can't even see because they're half hidden in there but these are cable needles made by Brittany who makes our wood we have two kinds of wood needles in the shop um, in terms of straight needles we have Brittany um, they also do our double points they are a U.S. company they make birch wood needles actually they're both birch wood the one mm -hmm. the straights we carry um, we have Brittany and we have Likey and Likey are wonderful. They have this extra smooth varnish on them. Brittany's are strong birch. Birch wood we like over, say, bamboo. Everyone's like, oh, I need bamboo needles. That's wonderful. However, birch wood is stronger 
than bamboo. So especially when you start getting smaller on the needles, like we have chow goo circulars and, and all these things I'm mentioning, these are the ones that are on sale this week. Um, but we have chow goo circulars called patinas. They are bamboo with a really nice patina finish and a really nice point, but bamboo is a pretty soft wood. And so when you get teeny tiny with them, there's a good chance they're gonna break. We with, cannot guarantee with, anything. With all wood, you get teeny tiny enough and you put enough pressure on it, whether it's sitting on them or somebody stepping or, on them by accident. Know, pulling or, really yeah. hard on them. Um, so the, the Britneys, the double points we have don't go smaller than like a size two, a US two, because you get smaller than that. Like someone comes in wanting a zero. We're not gonna have those in double points because they will not stand under the pressure of knitting. Um, but there's reasons, what does that, that doesn't have anything like written on it. What, what does it say? It, it says uh, Brittany needles, knitting and crochet hooks, but these are their cable needles. They are made in California from sustainably harvest harvested birch sustainably harvested birch so not only birch wood but um usually sustainably harvested often implies that if they if they cut down trees they are replacing them in some way or they're doing something else to offset their carbon do footprint. we have one of your gauges and i'll see how there's a caveat to what she wants to do but yes because i clean the table I have a gauge ready and waiting. So what Liz is gonna do, because this these come in three different sizes and I wanna show you, and there's, and I have my, my caveat to it as well. These come in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. It's like baby bear and mama bear and papa bear in the Goldilocks story. Um, and my caveat is that they are slightly bigger. Like the biggest one is the easiest one to show this. They are slightly bigger on the ends then in, they have a point on the end, 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 but then they get thicker and then they get thinner in the center. So, and, and it probably is by the thickest spot yeah. that you want to pick. Like you want a cable needle that is smaller than the knitting needle you are using. And I'll get back to the unique shape of these and why I like them. And so, go ahead. The um, small one fits like it'll slip into the two, but it gets kind of stuck. It won't get through. It's three. It's a it's a US it's three. three. Yeah. How about the medium? The medium one, one is a seven. Okay. That's right in the middle. That's right great. in the middle. And the ba the big one is a 10. Okay. So these will suit different purposes. Honestly, if you just had the smallest one, um, you could do all your cabling. And be fine unless you're getting teeny 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 tiny if you're if you're starting to do cables on like a two or a one or a zero this might stretch them out a little bit um you need a cable needle that is smaller than the needle you're knitting with because you're slipping stitches off and doing your cables and putting them back on again and um of course i left my cami out home which is the thing that i am currently doing cables on um i can see if i can try to show you all how to do a cable really briefly on this VSC. But the, so my absolute favorite cabling needle of all time in terms of one that comes in a fixed shape because we have the ones that, that you can bend in any shape you want, which are kind of fun. Yeah. My absolute favorite cable needle of all time is a J hook because it disappears when you do a cable. It like when you fold it to the front, you're taking stitches like a cable. For people who haven't tried it yet. I used to think was voodoo magic. How do you make stitches look like they're moving over other stitches? There must be something horribly complicated for that. It's not horribly complicated. You slide stitches off your, work, your uh, holding needle onto another needle, move it to the front or back, keep going on your holding, keep knitting off of your holding needle, and then knit off of this one. And um, what's she doing? I'm gonna take stitches off. The reason that I, um, so J hook is my favorite because when you hold it to the front or to the back, it's out of your way because people hear third needle and they go, what? This guy, he's like a really short double point, but then he's got the thin thick going on. And the reason I like this, I like this, especially if we're only moving like one or two stitches around each other, because sometimes you don't need to move it really far out of the way. And having the thicker sides and the, the narrower center helps keep the stitches from falling off your cable needle. 
that's the real thing, reason I like it. And this variety pack, again, I only use the smallest one, which Liz has stolen from me. <laughs> but um, I tend to only use the smallest one and the other two. So I have a lot of sets at home that are missing the smallest one because I lose track of it. This is great fun watching it. Um, yeah, I don't know how Nobody much is really see, being seen on the camera, but maybe they are. I'm not going to judge. I'm used to the J hook and I've never used the, but it Ooh. works. Ooh. So here, let me show you on this guy that I'm knitting with is a nine. Do you want the small? No, I don't. Okay, I'm going to use the medium size because you stole the small. Well, I, I'm done. Well, the medium, I'm hoping, but it's still, we're still far enough away from the camera that it might be hard to see. But um, this doesn't actually have cables in it. Cables, you want to set up a whole straight section and then do your twisty because it'll pull at the rows underneath and it'll make it look really pretty. There's a whole kind of science behind when to cable and how many rows to cable to do something really fun. But sometimes you're not only looking for the twisties. So let me see if I can just show off some basics. Again, this will be from the back side. But if I get in here, and I'm just going to back this whole row out later. This is the one that's a seven. And I'm knitting on a nine right now. So a cable needle, I had a friend come in once and her husband is doing cabling and she showed me what he's cabling on and he's using a stitch holder, which isn't double ended, which means he has to take stitches off and then put them back on the holding needle, most likely, or else they get twisted. When you're cabling, you want, you want to have a clear side that you're slipping the stitches onto and the side you're slipping the stitches off of and not have them twisted. So a shorter one can sometimes work better for that. So I'm gonna slip two stitches off my work, holding them right there. And I'm gonna hold them to the back and I'm just gonna grab them with a couple fingers. That's what I do if I'm, doing, if I'm not letting it hang completely out of the way, but it's here in the back. And then I'm just gonna hold it out of the way and try not to twist it. I'm still holding it so it doesn't get twisty or it doesn't fall off. But I bet, look, if I just let it go, yeah, because this isn't the teeny tiny one and it has that thinner section in the center, even though I'm knitting on a nine and, and this is a seven, it's not going to fall off unless I do something really crazy to it, but I'm shaking it and it's, and the bigger sides of this are keeping it on, but I can grab it to keep it steady and I can knit two more off of my regular needle. And again, you all are seeing this kind of backwards probably because you're watching it from the other side. But then I can let this needle go. I can push this up if I'm really worried about stitches falling off of it. And then I'm gonna slide this to the other end over the hump part, which is still smaller than the needle I'm knitting with. <laughs> bless you. Thank you. And I'm gonna knit, knit these stitches. I'm gonna wait till she's done sneezing before I say bless you again. But this is free now. You done? I think so. Bless you. Thank you. Okay, this is free now and I put it down. Head nope. scratching is not part of the is not part of the cabling process. But then I can go ahead and knit a couple more off of this. And what's happened here? Again, it's not set up well because if I would be doing straight stitches underneath this if I really wanted to shine. But I've just made stitches trade places with each other. She's allergic to me. That's what it is. No, but. Um, Morning. But these are fun because they're short. They don't have a funky shape. Sometimes they, the cable needles will have a bend in the middle, but the, instead of having a bend in the middle, this just has the ends are a little bit thicker. There's also cable needles where they have ridges in them to try to like, they have notches cut in them. Knitter's Pride makes those. We stop carrying them because it's hard to move your stitches around with that. I mean, the whole point is so they don't fall off, but it's hard to move them around. So if you're looking for just a little itty bitty fun guy, I really like these. Um, I have a, a, a couple of projects at home that I'm working on, or there are hats here in the shop that was only a one by one cable. Like when you're only moving a couple of stitches or even just one stitch over one stitch, I have bigger ones like my big yoga cable needle where I can change it and make it a funky shape. But here's that one. But that one, like this one, I've made a little curly cue because it's fun, but one stitch, if I have to move it from one end all the way to the other end, it's a little bit obnoxious when it's this big. 
So this might not be my cable needle of choice if I'm moving only a few stitches or only one stitch around. Um, that's when these, this one's really, really handy. The, the smallest size, when I did my cable that I undid, uh, the smallest size worked fine for my nine, mm -hmm. you know, like. Yeah, but I, you can use they, the itty bitty one. Yeah. Absolutely, for all of them. It, if, you're, if you're knitting on a needle smaller than a three, then these might not work for you. But you know, since those kind of needles don't exist in Liz's world, this set will work just fine, right? And again, it comes all rubber banded. You get three needles in there. What's the price, Liz? Six twenty-five. Regular price. You can save fifteen percent this week. There you go. By putting the code Product of the Week in the checkout box when you check out, it will only apply to the things that we're talking about this week. Um, or you can come into the shop and say, "I want to take advantage of the Products of the Week sale." So, um, all right. <laughs> That's the notion we're doing this week. What yarn are we doing this week, Liz? Because this that. this this week we picked. Or well, I picked Motley because mm -hmm. it was hanging on the back and Rebecca's sample of it was laying on the back of a chair. And I was <laughs> like, I think it's online. So and it is actually, if it wasn't, it'd be a good reason for me to put it online. I've, I've been trying to find the energy to put new yarns online or make kits, both of which I hope to do sometime soon. But um, until the AC is, is fixed in my house, I'm having trouble getting enough rest to be really productive during the day other than helping lovely shoppers so motley is a wonderful blend of 60 percent super fine alpaca and 40 percent merino wool you get 328 yards for 100 grams let's see if there's any other specific <laughs> hand wash they count it as a dk recommending you a six needle um lay flat to dry it's this yeah. section in here motley i mean it's got these mottled colors Ooh. it does a stripey thing it's not the light part down here that's feeder brook but this part this is my wakanda forever um it's nakia's in infinity wrap i call it my wakanda forever wrap um but this is how it knits up look it like i did this on i don't even remember what needle but i want to say it was on a seven or an eight so look, you can kind of see through it because of this thin, thick quality. Yep. It'll have sections that are super thin and it'll have sections that are not bulky. It doesn't get really big. It gets about DK. Yeah. Maybe a light. But see, there's, there's thinner sections of that. Um, it is wonderfully soft. Uh, there's tons of yardage for a DK yarn. There's tons of yardage on the skein. Um, there's another section I did over here. There's a little bit of lace work on this shawl that I did with the motley over here, just the dark part right there. And I think we're actually out of this dark color. We're out of that the green dark color. So I'm sorry, my sample is showing off a color we do not have because Sugarbush is done. So what we have, we have. Um, I think I have some skeins of, of the gold and teal. This one, I have some skeins I can return to the shop from home because I was going to make a whole pullover out of this. The, it was like the sorceress is... It was a hoodie. Something. It was a hoodie with bell sleeves. <coughs> and it was going to be so beautiful. And time got away from me. And this beautiful color, like I feel like I should knit another sample with this. Because it's just so pretty. Like it's hard for the camera. Like I'm, we might have to turn the exposure up on this video. But what I've noticed, I think about all the skeins... They all have a little brown and a little gray. What Liz has noticed about this game. What have you noticed? No, no, it's the same thing. <laughs> I just like, I made, I just realized, and no, she already knew. Um, like some of them might have more of the gray to off white. Like there's a, some of the more neutrals don't have as much of the gray brown in them, but they still have some brown. They have pops of color though. It's like, we've got these lovely neutrals. Like it's the gray and the brown right in here that again is so dark in terms of our only using natural lighting to show off um, here but a lot of the dark and broody colors they add pops on top of that and it's really 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 cool so what color name do you have um well before we get too much into the color names there might be one or two colors that we only have a few skeins of that they messed up the color names on and if i remember i'll let you know but if i don't remember or you know 
we'll we'll attach them to we'll make sure the pictures are correct so you know when you select something online you're getting what's pictured use the drop down menu i always have to tell people use the drop down menu to select that and um not clicking on the photos on our website because that won't change what's in the drop down menu and the drop down menu is what impacts what ends up in your cart so um and i feel like the, oh yeah i always we we like to doubly and triply reiterate that dragon dollars and gift certificates can't the magic can't work in our online shop yet we're still talking with the company about that they're still testing how to make stuff like that work so if you'd like to spend um bonus money with us which you know gift certificate may or may not be bonus money you might have bought yourself one um contact the shop it's not gonna work online contact the shop we'll we'll make it work that's the thing we want you to spend those things but you'll have to contact the shop to do it doesn't mean you have to be in town contact the shop okay small print side of this is over so um what color am i holding is yes. that what you is that what, what you asked you? like 15 minutes ago yeah. <laughs> i'm holding gold dust it's cut color number 12 gold dust and in addition to the the browns and light grays mostly it's like a medium not quite a charcoal gray um we have a dusty golden color and I would say it's somewhere between a teal and a blue. Yeah, kind of, it's right? like a blue, it's the bluer end of teal. Yeah, so it's not just a teal, but it's it's a lovely, lovely color. I would love to make something out of this, but I also don't want to take it away from you if you want to buy it. So yeah, that's color number 12, gold dust. I'm holding color number two, rustic rainbow. And that's one of the more neutrals, right? Yes, it is um, not a pumpkin-y orange, but a burnt, burnt orange yeah it's it's almost it's almost like a squashy orange yeah. you know like uh yeah and then there's the browns and the grays and the the grays look lighter in that one that's the one of the reasons i was like well it's not it's not the same browns and grays in every single some one of, some are lighter some are darker. like this is a lighter gray it's almost got a creamy gray in it yeah so a taupey cream the rustic rainbow though is is more browns and um that squashy that color. squashy color yeah butternut squash that's yeah, what i was going for that's it butternut squash it's color number two color Rustic number two okay rainbow. go ahead well i'm gonna i'm gonna go off of rustic rainbow is warmer and a little lighter than one of our other neutrals the one i'm holding right now is number three twisted tan and this is a little bit closer it to a, to like a burnt orangey brown. Yeah, it's it's not brown and it's not orange. It's not but... a burnt sienna. It's not quite that that warm, but it's it's got more of a of a white gray going on in it and some browns, but it almost got looks a warm, like tree warm... bark. Yeah. It's like this is this is really more warmer and this is a mid-range warmer. But see, you can see next to each other, this one's a little darker. So I am holding multi moss and it's got several different shades of green from a lighter <laughs> green all the way into I would say these are our neutrally yeah. ones but but the one she's holding has some more like it's pea, pea green pea to, greens, to, to uh, olive green yeah. to grays of, and browns of the neutrals that has more green in it yeah. but it's still I would still consider it a pretty neutral color I feel like these three have more of the white gray mm -hmm. and or cream in them as opposed yeah. to the others have some darker gray um we've got oh I want to do these two because these two both have red in them but they're a little different like the first like one the I've browns. got here what Kind of like the browns. Hey, I think there's a theme here. This is number 11, Speckled Scarlet. And so this has the grays and more noticeable brown brown and um, a pretty vibrant warm red in it. I'm trying to like, I feel like they're all gonna look the same on camera, but we're describing them and you can see pictures online. This is the other one. It has no tag on it, Liz. Oh, hold on. There's one right there. You can get the one up there. Sometimes these tags fall off. Like this tag is trying to come off because of how the tags are made. Yeah. So this one has, um, it's almost a purpley red in it. It's not quite, It's they almost are the same red, but not quite. This one's got a little more purple 
And then it actually has like a light lavender streakiness to it. That's going to give it a stripiness. Um, and it is called number five, Burgundy Blast. So yeah, the, I would consider the red in here a little more burgundy. And it's got a light purple, a light soft purple in it too. So Scarlet Burgundy. This one's got a lot more of the um, browns and I'm losing my train of thought. The browns and grays in it. Mm -hmm. This has a little bit of brown, a lot of gray, and a little bit of a dusky lavender with the burgundy. All right, what you got? So to go along yeah. with the gold dust. I was like, I already said that one, but she's just complimenting them. I'm they sorry. have two more with the, the teals. Um, the ones I think are confused. We have that. peppered teal. Uh, it's a grayer teal than in the than the gold dust. Yeah, and then it's there's like it's not quite as blue blue gray and browns, but it also looks like there's little pops of the green. There's some olivey green in that one. Yeah. I really do like that one. It's got much a much lighter gray in it too. Yeah, than the the gold dust one. And then this one is a darker, so kind of like the same gold dust <laughs> background, but we have purple and teal. And it's the darker teal, like the the. And the purple is a little bit more intense than the than the lav dusky yeah. lavender in the um, burgundy one. Yeah. It's a little bit more jewel tony of a purple. Yeah, and That's then fun. browns and darker grays, and it is mauve mingle. Oh wait 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 wait. No, there's. Can you pull the one on the end up there? Oh, you've got it there. Maybe. Okay. There's there's okay. These are two pinks. And then that one is more of um, a coral color in it than a pink. And like I said, there's a couple of these that um, the colors got, the names got confused. When I went to reorder them, the color names didn't match up with what the labels were saying, but then it, there wasn't a chance to reorder them anyway. So according to our system, I think what we have online, I think that is the color that the, um, the poncho, the thing I was gonna make, yeah. the hoodie was actually knitted and then I picked a different color. What's that one? This one is mosaic mango. And because I think that's of right, because it's got the mango -y, mango y coral -y color in it. Yeah. But it's got navy. It has navy and then the brown and the darker gray. Yeah, it's really pretty. Um these two, we've got rose hue and flashy fuchsia. I might have actually Those changed the labels. Um no that there were issues and I guess there's no issues anymore. So don't listen to me, but um, this one rose hue, it really has different shades of pink in it from, from, a, from light to dusky rose, but still a little bit of gray and a few different shades of gray too. The, this, yep. the, the rose hue is just really pretty. I got to make sure these names match up online. Cause I feel like I kind of straightened them out, but um I, I, I distinctly remember there being an issue at some point and I wasn't sure if I fixed it or not. I think it could be a color, a color that is gone at this point was mislabeled, but maybe we don't have any anymore. Um, this one is called flashy fuchsia. And there are some bright, what I would call fuchsia pinks in here. There are some almost red browns as well. And a little bit of that dusky rose. So there's <clears throat> a little overlap between these two, but this guy's brighter and darker at the same time mm -hmm. than this one. This one's a little bit of a softer palette, but any of these, if you want just a hint of, of dark and broody and stripey and ridiculously soft because the alpaca. the alpaca and Merino is just so soft and so wonderful. And if you want a mild, thin, thick, like there's parts of this, I can look at right here where it's itty bitty thin. And then there's parts of this guy where it's a little bit thicker. It's I'd say it bounces from like fingering or just slightly less than fingering to Sometimes. decay. Yeah. And there's a twist and almost apply to it, but it's not like a two ply or like, you know, where you see distinct um, plies wrapped around each other. It really does look and feel more like a single ply, but sometimes there's, there's two colors in that ply. It's really funky in the way that it's constructed. And I think, I mean, they have patterns written for whole entire garments out of it. I don't know if we have how much we have left of each colorway in terms of being able to set you up with a with a whole garment's worth. Could be really wonderful for scarves and hats and lots of really nice accessories right now. Mm -hmm. But like I said, 328 yards. 
that's, that's actually more like a sport weight yardage, but because of the thin, thick quality, they classify, they tend to classify yarns by their thickest portions. And so they're calling it a DK. So if you tried to make a sport weight thing out of this, you might have some thicker, tighter stitches where it is thicker. Yeah. So have fun with it though. Do something with it. We would love for it to find a good home. Retail price. Fourteen seventy five. So it's, it's really good quality, really value. good yeah. price for good price point for the yep. value you're getting. And it's 15% off this week. Yep. It's pretty amazing. So um, I'm noticing we've talked through all of our time because I got to start it kind of late because life, you know, right. but right. I'll try to get these up online. I have a lesson this morning They're and we online. don't. Well, oh, I mean, in the right category in the product, please don't try the code or please don't yell at us um, until it's in the product of the week category and the code still doesn't work, which shouldn't happen. Um, I need to I need to move things in the categories. That's what I yes. meant. Okay. That's what I meant, I think. I am tired and I have been talking and not drinking my coffee. This feels pretty heavy still. So, it's a problem. but it's, it's, it's not a good problem to have. It's just a problem. So, um, Tomorrow is our Dear Becky and Lizzie edition. Uh, we have a couple of potential questions that we can talk about, but we would love more because if we don't get to them tomorrow, we can always get to them next week. So at this they, point- They're shorter questions. Yeah, so, so we not, can take some more you know, if other people yeah. have pressing burning questions, but you want to email. Liz, it's on dragonartandfiber.com. And if you want to send us a card for a future week, you can write us at Dear Becky and Lizzie, Sun Dragon Art and Fiber, 35 South Broad Street, Brevard, North Carolina, 28712. Friday is another knit night. We had one last night. I wasn't there for most of it because we were trying to fix my AC and I didn't you know, want to distract or put people on camera who didn't want to be on camera. Um, but try again on Friday if you want to actually see me. I know you had fun hanging out with Liz last night. So 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, shop phone number. 828-877-3550. To get you into the Zoom virtual sit and stitch and next week we repeat the whole deal right so yeah i have to go drink some coffee so i'm awake for the lesson that's coming hopefully at at 10 30 and um and we'll we'll talk to you all tomorrow like subscribe ring the bell patreon all that fun stuff yeah, we're at we're at 575 i know we're 25 people away from giving you all a sale so if you haven't subscribed and thank you to um, some people who, who we ha even had a customer who came in recently who subscribed yesterday. Thank you. And um, yeah, if you haven't subscribed already, consider it because you could be helping everybody earn a sale online. Wouldn't that be fun to say like, I'm, I played a role in that. So y'all have, but you know, um, yeah. And, and we, we, we thank you to the husbands who were subscribed the last time we hit 500 <laughs> that it was like, Hey, are you subscribed? We need a sale. We and, need a sale. You know. Sign yourself up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what, whatever makes it work. It's all good. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.